OK, so it is two minutes past, so I will make a start. I am conscious people wouldn't want to be uh, out of this by 8 p.m. Um, so we will make a start. Uh, so firstly, con uh, thank you for coming th this evening uh, for tuning in. We do appreciate it uh, and we do hope you find it useful. Uh, basically, we will be running through the whole player registration process and answering any questions you may have. Um, and please feel free to drop your questions into the question and answer functionality you should see uh, on your screens. Um, just as a bit of a precursor, um, due to the significant number of callers that were meant to be on this call, uh, we did have to set this up as a live event. And basically that means that we can't hear or see you. So the only way to ask a question to us is via the Q&A. So please, 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 if you do have a question, put drop it into the Q&A uh, and Jack's in there. Um, who did send out the wrong link, uh, not to drop him in it slightly. Um, but yes, he is in there uh, answering the questions. So feel free to uh, uh, keep him busy. Um, if you are struggling to the screen at all, uh, if you if you uh, you can add full screen mode by either tapping to the centre of your uh, video screen and you'll see three dots will pop up in the hover bar or for using a computer or a laptop just hovering over the centre of the screen should bring up the hover bar. Uh, but clicking the three dots, you'll see the option to go to full screen mode, uh, which just zooms it in just that little bit. Um, a lot of this process is maybe new to a lot of people, so please uh, do. Well, we, we actually we do thank you for your patience uh, with some of the questions that may come in, because um, that could last just a couple, uh, maybe five, ten minutes or so. Uh, some better questions which you might think are basic, uh, but for someone using this for the first time, uh, we want to make sure that everybody um, is getting the answers they need, uh, so they are as confident as possible going forwards to answer, uh, to be able to run uh, their player registrations for their clubs or leagues. Uh, and finally, the recording will be available. Um, so after this meeting, if you click on the link you've uh, used to get onto this meeting, that will become a link to the recording. Um, so as you may have already become uh, aware of by now with Jackson, the wrong link, it will take you to the recording of the meeting after this has finished. Um, so if you do want to circulate that to you, other people on your committees or other people in your club, you are more than welcome to and they will access this recording. Um, so as I said before, uh, we're going to go through the whole game updates and some of the stuff that's already been pulled through uh, to uh, to whole game system. Then Kirsten's going to take you through a demonstration of player registration from start to finish and literally every single process you may need to go through. Um, we'll then go through any questions that people have and then where you can find further support. Um, so you, tonight you've got myself, I'm Sam Yates from the technology adoption team. As I said, we've got Kirsten doing the uh, demonstration tonight and we also have Jack in the Q&A. So please, if you do have any questions, please do bother them in there. So in terms of how all our systems fit together, we've got three that pretty much cover the whole of grassroots. Uh, so whole game system is our one true source of data according to GDPR. Uh, but basically, uh, to, uh, to, the, to most people, that just means that that's where you put your data in and then we make sure that data feeds across into our other systems. Um, so that hopefully that will save you duplication of data. Now you can see uh, through the arrows what information is actually transferring. So you can see from whole game, your seasons, your divisions, team administrators, cups, players, um, development groups, whatever it may be, will all pull across from whole game system and will automatically populate full time. So uh, maybe in three, four years ago, uh, if you were to create all your league uh, club affiliation data or your league sanction data in whole game, you then had to re-input that same data into full time. Obviously, that's no longer the case. You put it into whole game and then we integrate it across, which also pulls into match day as well. Uh, so if you're using match day as a club, either for match returns or for the payments or both, um, Obviously, the players will pull across, managers, coaches and team administrators, etc. will all pull from whole game and be sat in match day. Now, what you can see at the very bottom is full time and match day are linked. So fixture details, match returns and league tables will float between the two. Um, so they are completely live and up to date. Um, I know from a from a managing point of view for myself, my under 14s and my ladies team, as soon as I finish the game, I complete my match return in match day as I'm walking back to the car probably controlling myself uh, due to we've suffered another heavy defeat. Although under 14s, I've refused to count scores anymore uh, due to the fact that we were getting beat week in, week out, um, which so, so be my uh, managerial career going so well. 
Uh, but basically, it's an easy way for team managers to complete match returns, but also for players and managers to keep up to date with their fixtures, any fixture changes, uh, and to keep a track of league tables as well if it's competitive football. So that's how they all fit together. Now, if you've never looked into a whole game before, some of this may look exactly the same as you've always known it. Uh, but if you've been in whole game for the past three, two, well, two, three, four, five years, um, so you will have noticed that the login screen and if you've been into your account recently, that your account screens have changed. Now, they've become mobile friendly for a start. Uh, it's the first of a four year transition uh, to make our platforms mobile friendly uh, and also cloud based as well. So that no matter how many people are accessing at any time of day, it will run the same speeds. So it will run much faster and much more efficiently than sometimes we have had over the summer periods uh, at its busiest time. But basically, one of the biggest changes that we've had away from just going mobile friendly is the fact you now have to log in with your email address. Uh, and the reason for that is we are coming away from a fan number being a person's unique identifier. And the reason for that is because fans were duplicated far too often. Uh, and having an email address means that we can verify the email and verify that that one person has that one email address, i.e. can't create a second account. Um, so we'll stop duplicate data. Also in there, in terms of my account and how that now works, you can opt in um, to marketing. When we come on to some of the later screens, you'll probably realise that um, in 21-22 season, uh, an email address for every player is mandatory. Again, that's to ensure that we have a single record for a single person. Um, but what that doesn't mean is we can market to them. If you want to opt in to FA marketing, um, you have to physically opt in. We can't automatically assume you opt in. Um, so please don't think we are collecting email addresses just so that we can market to you under GDPR. We absolutely cannot unless you have ticked that box to say you want it. Also in there, in your in my account, you can now see all your coaching qualifications and your safeguarding details as well. But also, most importantly, you own all of your own data and that can include players. So if a player does have an email address and they can log into whole game system, they can manage their own data. Uh, and that's key, really, to uh, to have a good data practice and good data policy is that a person can see exactly what data they we hold um, on them and what roles they may have in football as well. But that also does mean that they actually, in theory, can maintain their own data. So if they do maybe change an email address, change physical address or any other of their, of their data, they can manually update it themselves and will not rely on you having to do it on behalf of them as a club uh, official. So in terms of whole game system, why, uh, and as I said before, it is becoming mandatory to register your players through whole game for the 21-22 season. And there's five reasons there, and I won't read them out to you, but I will delve into a couple just for you. Um, so you can see um, one main one from my perspective as a as a manager in grassroots football is the efficiency. What we want to do is reduce the admin time it takes to come. Well, it takes to complete your admin, really. Um, so what we, want, what we don't want to be doing is filling out reams of paper after a game. Uh, and have to go through loads of different paperwork and posting and dropping and like, it, physically posting um, forms through letterboxes. We want to get away from that and make it as streamlined and as simple and as easy as possible, uh, potentially taking that online. Um, also, down the bottom here, we've got safeguarding and low updates. Um, from, a, from, a, from a safeguarding perspective, it's key for us really to have that parental detail just in case the worst happens, and we don't want it to, but just in case it does, we have direct contact with the parents uh, of that child or guardian of that child, and we can ensure that they are um, that they are well informed and understand what's happening uh, across their child's football. Um, but also on the back of that as well um, is any law updates. So recently we had the introduction of sim bins. It would be an ideal opportunity for us. Uh, to be able to email out to every participant to explain exactly what Simbins is and how it will affect um, you as a player, you as a coach, you as a manager. And we could do that um, if we had the uh, email address for every single participant, um, which hopefully will save you having to traipse all the way across to a, uh, a venue to listen to a two and a half hour seminar. And you could just log into an email address, uh, any, into an email, watch a quick video of how it might affect you, uh, and then if you want to join a webinar like this online um, and save you the travel time, 
and hopefully reduce that time it takes to volunteer again away from the pitch because we want you to spend more time uh, on the pitch and doing what you enjoy the most. Uh, and finally, really, in, the, in that bottom left, and also kind of fits into the top, the first one as well, the smart data, um, but having the ability to see how many players play at a venue is vital for us to ensure that one, we are protecting those pitches that are needed the most, but also those pitches that are rated the worst, but still have the highest play numbers. We can streamline the funding into those venues, into those pitches to make sure that we are um, providing the best opportunities for players to play football. Um, so this could be you. As you can see, hopefully in the pictures, there are uh, some. These are some of the uh, prizes we gave away last year for clubs and leagues um, that were registering players through whole game system, uh, especially with email addresses. So uh, the FA Cup made a trip to Northam FC or Northam 75 um, in, down in the south somewhere. Um, so that had the whole club down taking pictures with a trophy. Uh, and also we had Cheddar Ladies had a visit from Tony Adams, um, who ran a coaching session. Um, to the whole to the to the first team and um, so hopefully these are prizes that we hope to replicate this year also on the back of, uh, of this as well um, we did have a prize draw from uh, from leagues who had email as mandatory um, to have a box at the um, at the charity shield last year uh, and that was won by a league down in Essex and they definitely did have a wonderful time I did pop in and see them and they did appear to be enjoying the uh, the festivities in the box so these are just some of the prizes that we're hoping to replicate for this season coming uh, hopefully football will be played back in front of crowds sooner rather than later um, so we can get back to pretty much football as it was uh, and hopefully forget um, this current situation ever happened because uh, it's been a nightmare to deal with I know from very from many volunteers points of view trying to finish a season uh, that can appease everybody, even though no situation can do that. So I am now going to hand you over to Kirsten, who will take you through the uh, whole play registration process. Thank you, sir. So let me just share my screen. Oops, went ahead of myself there. Right, first things first whole game system. So when you log in, this is what you should get. First thing I'm going to show is how to add a club player registration officer. So what you want to do is you want to click on your club. I'm going to use the FA demonstration club and I want to go down on the left hand side and click club officials on the left. This will take me to this page so I can see all my key officials. I can see the chairman, the secretary, any other club officials. What I want to do is I want to click add official. Now this brings me up this. So in order to add the club official, I can either search for them by their fan and their date of birth, or I can search by their details if I do not know their fan, or I can create a new contact. But in this case, I'm going to search by fan. So I'm going to put in this fan number and the person's date of birth. Now I will click search. Now this will bring up my person that's relevant to, my, to that in the data that I've just put in. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm on the right club, select the role and select player registration officer and select the start date. So I'm going to select the start date as today. I then want to check the box and click OK. So Patrick is now a club registration officer. He can now register players for his team and a lot of clubs tend to do this if they have quite a few players just to even out the workload so you can make it as your managers one your coaches your team secretaries anything just to ease the registration process so next i want to click on player registration and this brings me up the screen and this should show all my players registered to my club if i have any with new clubs going on there you might see players that are no longer with your club and they could be on here for discipline reasons so if you're wanting to get rid of players that are no longer with your club, I would find a player. So I'm going to use myself. Tick the box next to the player's name and it will bring me these options up here. So what I want to click, detach from club. Click yes. And this should move me into the detached players where this player will now stay for 14 days. So I have 14 days if I want to reattach them. If not, it will then disappear. 
so I can reattach myself. And that's pretty simple and how to detach a player from your club. So next we're going to get into the main part and I want to search for a new player to register to my club. So I click the blue search button and this brings me up my options. So I need to enter either the first and last name, the date or the date of birth or the postcode. The postcode is not that important to enter. If you know it, that's great. If you don't, that's OK. If you know the fan, that helps even more. But in this case, I'm going to enter my person's first name and date of birth. Going to click search. Now this will search the FA system for anyone that matches that details. And as I can see, I have a match. So this shows me Patrick Avenger, his date of birth. If I hover over it, it shows me the correct date of birth and his age. It also show any clubs that he's currently signed with, any previous clubs. But as you can see, Patrick has not played football. So I'm going to click add player. This will bring me up this again. It also will state if there's any current clubs. Obviously, Patrick hasn't played, so that's okay. I'm then going to click the current club details are correct. Click validate and click add to, add to club. This now shows that Patrick is currently with my club and he's attached. So next, so if for instance, they search the FA system and no one came up with their details. So if I change to Patrick football and I change his date of birth, click search, it will come up zero contacts found. So that means no one matches the FA system with that name and last name and that date of birth. So I click OK and then I can click create new player, which will bring me up this option. So now I can enter Patrick's details. So I can enter his postcode. I can look up the address and it will bring me up all the houses with the address. So let's say this one. I can then also enter Patrick's email address. And it also is just to make note that email does become mandatory by the 21-22 season. So it's best to get ahead of now. So any player over the age of 16 will need an email address. So I can add Patrick's email address. And I'm just going to use a generic one. Patrick's mail, phone host phone number, and I can click save. And this will then create Patrick a new fan number and add him to my club. So the next one we're going to go on to is now that Patrick's added to the club, we need to gain consent. So I'm going to search for Patrick. And if I click the arrow down on the right, this shows that Patrick has not got consent and he's not been added to a team. So there's two types of consent. There's online consent and offline consent. Online consent, how I would do this, tick the box next to Patrick's name and it will bring me up my options again. And I want to click request consent. As you can see, consent has been successfully requested via the email for the following player. So Patrick should receive an email which will look something like this. And what that would say is, dear Patrick or dear or whoever the player is, this club has requested you confirm that you wish to play for them for this season. And all they need to do is click respond to request. So this will then take them to a web link where to confirm their request, they would just need to enter their date of birth in the correct format as the, so day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. And then click I am not a robot and click submit. This will then change Patrick's consent pending to consent approve and it will be green once Patrick accepts his online consent. Offline consent is usually used if you have a con if the player has given you consent to play for your club. So that can be a registration form or an email or any form of written consent. It also will need to be in your league's requirements if you can do offline consent. And how you would do offline consent is tick next to the player's name. Click confirm offline consent. Click accept. And this will turn to green. So now I am saying that I have written consent that Patrick wishes to play for my club. So the next thing we're going to go on to is ID checks. So I want to click on Patrick's name. And this will bring me up the screen. As you can see, it's already been an ID check, but we're going to add another one. So I click ID check. And I'm saying I have seen Patrick's driving license. It has been completed by myself. And the date completed 
was today. So I want to add ID check and I have confirmed that I have seen that practice details is correct. And that's an ID check. Next thing we want to do is we want to add a photo. So I want to click edit details on Patrick and it will bring me up individual photo option. So I want to select the photo and I'm going to select Captain America and this will load. Then I can crop it to depending on what's in my league requirements. So my league may say they need to see shoulders, they need a full length, they may only need the face. We're going to go with my league, my league needs that. So I've cropped it and save changes. This should now add a photo to Patrick's registration. As you can see. So now what we've done, we've added the player to the club. We've gained their consent. We've done an ID check. We've added photos. We now need to assign them to a team. So I'm going to search for Patrick again. As I can see, Patrick is still not assigned to a team. So I'm going to tick the box and bring up my options once again. I then want to click assign to teams and click OK. This will bring up all the options that all the teams that Patrick is eligible to play in. So if Patrick can play in two, two teams, I can select two. If he can play in three, I can select three. In this case, we're only going to do the first team, just as an example. So I selected the team that Patrick wishes to play for or is eligible to play for, and I click add to select the teams. If I then click on my arrow, I can now see Patrick has been added to the FA Demonstration Club first team. However, he is not league registered yet. So the next step we need to do is submit Patrick to the league for, le for the league to approve his registration. And how I do that is I tick my box again and bring up my options. I then click submit to league and it brings me a, a, a message about international clearance. So all I want to do is confirm that Patrick or none of the players that I have selected has ever played outside England. And if they have, they do have international clearance. And click submit. So if I click my arrow, I can see that Patrick is now league pending. So he's now been sent to the league for his registration to be approved. So the next thing we're going to do is parent guardian link. So under 16s will need to have their parent guardian linked via their fan. And how we do this is I'm going to use this penguin child as an example. So I'm going to click on penguin child. And as you can see, it brings up parent guardian. So there's no parent guardian found. So what I want to do is I want to click add parent guardian and I can search for their details. So I'm going to search for myself. And click search. And if that parent already has a fan number with the details you've put in, the system will find it. If the parent does not have a fan number, you can create a new fan number for them where it says not my record, create new fan. However, I'm this is obviously my fan, so I'm going to click associate this parent. It's come up with this because I've done this before in other demonstrations, but what it will do, it will then show that there's a parent guardian link. Um, there's something also to remember that next month there will be hopefully a new functionality release, so we'll make linking the parent and the player a little easier. So next thing I'm going to show is the squad list. And all I want to do is get my squad list is click on teams. And this will bring up all the teams within my club. So I'm going to use my first team to see that squad list. And all I do is click squad list. This will then download my squad list. And then once that's downloaded, it will display my squad list. So what it will show is a picture of the player, their name, their age and their date registered. Now, as you can see, Patrick is not on this because Patrick ha registration has not been league approved yet. So players will only show on the squad list once the league has approved their reg registration. And that is all for me. So if there's any questions, please feel free to ask.
Thank you for that question. That's brilliant. Um, just before we do go into the uh, questions, and I can see there has been quite a few, we've just got um, a couple of FAQs that have been covered off uh, from previous sessions. So if you bear with me one second, I'll just reshare my screen um, so that you can see what I am talking about. Um, oops, it doesn't seem to want to play ball with me right now, but bear with me one second. Share by edge. <clears throat> so I hope you can see this now. Um, so in terms of frequent questions we've had so far, um, one question we tend to get, and I think we've already had it tonight, is children don't have email addresses, uh, and that's correct. Uh, and we also, we also do not store the email address of anyone who is under the age of 16, uh, as we cannot legally. Um, so for anyone who is under the age of 16, you'll have to link the parent or guardian and then they will have to have a valid email address. So a parent guardian uh, can have as many children as they need as they have, and that um, email address will go across all of those children, except actually it won't physically be held across the child, it will be held on the parent record. Um, so there's, there's no holding of email addresses on under 16s, and we will not be directly communicating with under 16s. Uh, another one is what if my players don't have an email address? Um, just to try and put your mind at ease, according to the Office of National Statistics, uh, the majority of the UK, uh, at least between 16 to 44, uh, were recent internet users, that being they had logged in in the last week. Uh, so that was 99% of those people. Uh, and that did drop ever so slightly but where, as you go further up the age groups, but it's always above uh, at least 75%. I think if you go 80 plus, I think it drops to 75%. Um, of people using an email address, but for tax returns and for online banking, you have to have an email these days. So the majority of people have them, but we do know there are people out there who don't, uh, and we will have um, processes in place to ensure that those players can still play. We do not want to stop someone playing just because they don't have an email address. So please don't think that's what's going to happen. We will have a process in place for people who do not have an email address. But the majority of people we are under the impression will do uh, due to that, uh, the, the Office of National Statistics, plus also a lot of the other national governing bodies are well ahead of us and have already mandated the fact you have to have an email address to play the sport uh, at grassroots level. So we are just playing catch up really. Um, next one is can managers have place to their own teams? Um, the answer is yes, but, and we will caveat this, uh, they'll have to be added as a club player registration officer on whole game system uh, as Kirsten showed um, but it, it is worth re reiterating the fact that that is a club role not a team role so they will see every single player's data in the club um, so it's up to you whether you add the managers in to have their own teams I know for the the club I'm involved with we had every manager go in and update their own detail or, or to upload their own teams and other own details and once they were complete we then removed them as player registration officers and then left it to the committee uh, to manage the stragglers that come through through the rest of the season but that is decided at a club level you have full flexibility of that uh, of that uh, of the people you can have as player registration officers um, another question we often get is how do transfers work? Um, so they are completed by a whole game. So basically you go through the same process Kirsten has just shown you up until you assign to team. Once you try and assign to team, it will then uh, bring up the fact that this person is registered elsewhere um, and that that will have to be a transfer or due registration. And that will go to the league to decide uh, to accept or reject. Uh, and also when you add the player to the club initially, um, you will get a reminder that you have to do or have to uh, abide by the notice of approach, the seven day notice of approach um, uh, before you do sign or even start to sign this player. Um, so it is, it, always, it is all in whole game system. It's all been catered for. There are numerous uh, pop ups that will appear to make sure that people aren't getting confused or not getting this wrong. Um, but at the final stage of it is the league will sign off and say, yes, we approve this transfer, or yes, we approve this due registration, or actually, no, we're going to reject both of them. So um, it is fully um, uh, monitored by the league. Um, another one that we often get is what about GDPR? Why is the FA collecting email addresses? I did go into several reasons earlier, and there are several reasons on screen now. I don't want to read them out to you because that would be incredibly boring for you guys. Uh, but basically, just to reiterate, 
Um, we cannot market to people. We are basically doing it one to, uh, to validate the identity of parents and guardians. Uh, gu uh, yeah, guardians that we've add, it added to children. Um, and we're also then able to ensure that we aren't having duplicate data because the email addresses are verified. Uh, so it does ensure that we are plugging the gap when it comes to some bad data we've potentially had maybe a lot of in the past. But there's also tons of different other reasons you can see below uh, in terms of saving time and money uh, with contact details. We can get uh, open up the access to our digital offer such as Match Day, etc. Um, and we do comply with GDPR as does whole game system, Match Day and full time. So I'm now going to hand over to Jack, who is going to ask some of the questions that have come through the chat and me and Kirsten will do our best to answer those. So thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Kirsten, as well for your demo. Um, now we do have plenty of questions in the chat and we're trying to get back to all of them um, as we can. Um, most of them will be covered in the in the knowledge base, which we'll go into in just a bit. However, Sam, you might be able to shed some good news to the clubs online tonight um, around this query. So will I need a date of birth for every parent if they don't have a fan? Is there a way to do this with just the parent's email? Yeah, great shout. So um, for us to be able to securely add a parent or guardian to a child, we do require an email, a date of birth. Um, what we are doing next month in our in our release uh, is really the functionality that will come out is you will just basically put the email address of the parents against the child and that will automatically fire a email to the parents to say you've been added as the parent or guardian of this child please complete your profile uh, and basically that will then ask them to put in their name well to confirm their name date of birth and to verify their email address which they will have done by clicking on the link anyway and then they will confirm that they are the parent or guardian of the child or children that you have sent over so it puts a little bit more emphasis on the parent to own their own data uh, but what we have found through research is that parents or guardians are much more likely to give that data um, via typing it in themselves than actually giving it to the club to type in on their behalf. Um, so basically you'll add the email address to the child, that will fire off an email to the parents who will then complete the registration, well their, their account details, but will also mean that they have full control and full visibility of their child's data. Perfect, thanks Sam. Um, and another question, um, just to check, is linking to a parent or guardian account and collecting of emails uh, for this coming season or 21-22? Yeah, good question. Um, so this will often depend on your county FA because some county FAs have tried to get ahead of the curb, uh, curve sorry, and have brought it forward a year. Um, from, a, from a central FA point of view, we have mandated a player registration with an email address or a valid parent or guardian link uh, by the season 21-22. Uh, but I think uh, but off the top of my head, there are six counties that have pulled it forward to this season coming. Cool, perfect. Um, even if we have offline consent, will we still need the parent's email address in the whole game system? Uh, yes, so the consent is, is part of the registration process. Uh, what we require is the parental or guardian email address. Um, as I said before, from a safeguarding perspective, uh, we need or we want to have um, the parents uh, or guardians email address and contact details. So if sh something should go wrong or if we need to share something, uh, we can go direct to the parents or guardian uh, and remove some of the steps that we're in the we, we currently have where it has to go from FA to County FA, County FA to Club Welfare Officer, and then hopefully that passes from Club Welfare Officer to the parents. So um, having that direct contact around safeguarding is vital for us. Cool, perfect. Um, is a whole game system app available on Google Play or iOS? Good question. Uh, no, is the answer. Um, whole game is, too, is currently too large and um, the software we have um, isn't as modern as we potentially like. Um, as of hoping if you saw from very early screens, um, we are starting to transition the whole game onto an, to a more modern platform that's mobile friendly and cloud based. Um, so it won't be an app. We, we will be mobile friendly by your internet browser on your phone. Um, I was told seven day notice approach no longer took place within whole game. Yeah, good shout. So two years ago, whole game system did try and count down the days of from uh, the notice of approach going into the end. Um, but the feedback from leagues and clubs is it didn't work as well as people wanted it to. Um, and the feedback we got from a lot of users 
was just to have a flag to confirm that um, of the, the seven day notice of approach had happened. Um, so that is now the case. So when you try and add a player uh, to your club uh, and you do require notice of approach, you will be presented with a pop up which basically says you need to have adhered to the rule around notice of approach. Click here to confirm you have done so. And if you, if you, you can also click off it and it will take you to the relevant pages on the FA.com to explain the whole process around notice of approach. But the actual counting down uh, and approaching players happens outside of whole game. Um, just in whole game system, you confirm that you have complied with that regulation. Cool. And we'll do just a couple more. Um, I think we've covered most of them in the in the key themes, but um, I've got one probably here for Kirsten. Um, so Kirsten, who can we contact at the FA if we have any questions around this process? You can contact the service desk. So grassroots technology at the FA.com. Um, there's a good we're a good team there, so we'd be more than happy to help. Perfect. Thanks very much. And I'm just having a look through to see if there's any other um, we can quickly cover. Um, there's a couple of guys who have missed the start of this webinar, Sam. Um, can you advise it if there will be a recording sent out? Yeah, Fab. So the link that you've just clicked on to get to this uh, to this session will become the recording point uh, after we finished this, the call. Um, so if you want to, uh, after this call is finished, click back on the link and you'll see from the very beginning. Um, I think I start at 10 to 7. So the first 10 minutes may be just the uh, a blank screen or maybe PowerPoint just about to be loaded. Um, but if you fast forward about 10 minutes, you'll get to the start of the session and you can cover the 15 or so minutes you've missed um, from the start. And one final question now about some clubs that are already on whole game system. Um, their players are already in whole game. They've registered this season. Uh, what do they need to do to get um, ready for, for next year um, and get their players registered again? Yeah, great question. So um, if you haven't already and it's youth players, we would advise that you get in the parents or guardian email address or at least the parents or guardian linked, um, especially when we've got a bit of downtime before the new season kicks off. Um, or if it's an adult player, you can add in the email address of that player by the player's email tab. And that is simply a case of just typing in the email address and no further action needs to happen. Um, so that's nice and straightforward. Uh, but basically the registration opening date will be set by your league and it will roughly be around or after the 1st of July. So it's just a case really of removing those players that have left the club and starting to add those new players that have joined the club. Uh, so potentially you're looking at maybe one or two teams as opposed to having to do your whole club again. Uh, and then basically for the new season, all you're looking to do is re-add consent. You can do that online or you can add offline consent um, if, you, if you've already gained it and then just resubmit into the league for the new season. So it's a much quicker process um, from year two onwards. OK, and the last couple of, um, last couple of points um, we, we'll have for questions here. So do ID checks and um, photos, are they mandatory for every player? Yeah, great question. Uh, that's set by your league. So the league will specify in their requirements whether an ID check is needed and whether a photo is needed. So if you're in any doubt, just contact your league. Cool. Perfect. Um, and that that's it for the moment from the, the themes I can see. Um, but if there's any others that aren't covered, we'll, we'll try and get back to you um, in the chat. Excellent. Cheers, Jack. And I think I'm going to hand straight back to you anyway. Um, and just to have a quick flick around our knowledge base. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, I'll just share my screen now and we'll get it over um, to our knowledge base. Uh, well done, everyone, on passing the test on, on getting into tonight's event. Um, I am sorry for sending the wrong link out earlier, um, but these things happen, I guess. Uh, we're on to the grassroots technology knowledge base, and this is the place uh, for you to find all of your, your self-service answers. So if you've got any questions from tonight's webinar um, or anything you think you might want to investigate further, you can go to grassrootstechnology.vfa.com and you can access this site here. And this has over 150 different articles um, around our different products. So it has player registration in whole game system, full time, match day, um, and, and a couple of other products as well. But the, the, the main 150 are around the, the products you're seeing tonight. So whole game system, player registration, and there's lots of different um, articles here which will help guide you all the way through. So here we have our player registration section um, and if I click on the full guidance you can see all of tonight's walkthroughs um, in terms of the A to Z 
of going through the player registration system and exactly as you've seen it tonight you can go through here but actually if i go back to the home page it might be far easier um, to just search your query and often uh, this is this is what i'd encourage you to do so if you was, if you're struggling to an issue at the moment might be um, struggling to get logged into whole game system since we've changed from fan numbers to email address as a unique identifier um, and if you type in wgs login here you've got articles here um, on on logging in to whole game system again it might be that you have a question um, around parent or guardian linking um, or email addresses again you can type that in um, and we will have a host of articles here um, and if i click on this uh, this link we'll have a full walkthrough again and we do have some videos as well in there to take you right right the way through the process we also have down the right hand side our community forums and these are broken down again into whole game system, FA full time and the FA match day app. And this is the place where you can ask questions to other leagues um, or clubs and you can maybe get a bit of advice um, on maybe if they're trans if you're looking to transition over uh, for the start of next season um, and you want to find out how other clubs broke it down. So did they um, enroll managers as player registrations officers? Um, did, how did they break up the workload? It might be the place to ask. And we have lots of different um, chats in here. So if I click on uh, running an online AGM, for example. This is Leeds talking about how they're, they're planning on running their AGM for this year. And it's quite simple to log in. At the top here, we have our login and sign up options. If I click login, I can sign in. It's separate from my FA account, so I can sign in with Google, Facebook or Twitter. Um, and I can also sign in with my, if I've previously raised a ticket to the service desk, I can sign in here just by clicking forgot your password and getting a link set back. Now, the portal you can also raise new support tickets so i know um, someone mentioned around um, how can i get help if i'm if i'm struggling at all you can raise new tickets uh, via this site um, and you can also send them in to grassroots technology at the fa.com now i think sam's going to take the screen back in just a moment um, but in terms of the support that we can offer, we obviously have this site here, which is 24-7 grassrootstechnology.thefa.com. But we do also have um, a dedicated service desk team um, who operate Monday to Friday, 9 till 7, um, and also on Saturday mornings as well. So if you email anything, it's grassrootstechnology at thefa.com. Um, you can expect a good response from that team. But like I say, out of hours, please use the, the, the knowledge base, have a look around, um, and if you can't find the answer, by all means, get in touch with us um, and we should be able to help out. Perfect, back over to you, Sam. Yeah, great, thanks, Jack. Um, so, in terms of further support, um, if you are looking for pretty much anything to do with club and league, especially around the current situation, which is literally ever changing, uh, you can head to our dedicated leagues and clubs page on that link on the screen um, we will host a, a version of this slide deck on our uh, knowledge base so you can click on those links um, if you haven't had time to capture them or to uh, to uh, take a picture of them uh, but basically we'll give you a full demonstration uh, and link into whole game system and the knowledge base that jack just mentioned but there's also support around uh, legal guidance uh, for clubs grant fundings from Sports England, uh, COVID-19, FAQs, et cetera, et cetera, are all available through the clubs and leagues page, uh, which you can find on that link there. Um, also, our colleagues in the league and club team uh, are hosting weekly sessions currently um, around different aspects. At the moment, they are currently using social media. Um, so last week was how to use social media effectively. Uh, and some of the past ones have been around planning effectively during times of uncertainty and how to use marketing to build for the future. Um, I believe this week's is how to use social media to market your club or league. Um, and if you need any of those details, look at your County FA's Twitter feed uh, as they are promoting the links to register. And if you click on those, it will take you through. Uh, I believe they're pretty much always on a Wednesday or a Thursday um, from eight till half past nine. Uh, and they're run by our league colleagues over in the leagues and clubs team. Um, I'd highly recommend them. They are really good and really informative. You also will hear from other league and club colleagues across the grassroots network. Um, so I believe last week's session had a, um, a, a snippet from Warren Barlow from the Bolton and Berry Football League. Um, and another the week before there was a, another uh, adult league um, was able was presenting some of their um, 
so say best practice that they've seen uh, using social media so um if you're looking to uh pretty much grow your uh, knowledge base you're more than welcome to join those as i say if you head to twitter and look at your county fa you will find the link to register your interest for those weekly sessions so unless we have any other further questions i will open it up jack because we do have about five minutes spare should we have any further questions in yeah so we're just waiting for those um to go to come through now um uh, but i've we've got a question here from calf so i've previously not been able to log into match day app as i'm not a manager um i've not tried this recently has this been changed to allow a team administrator to log in yeah great question um currently no um it's currently the manager assistant manager coach or assistant coach that has access to match day um, now after speaking with safeguarding and speaking with our developers um, we are looking to have a team administrator access into match day uh, and we will hope to have that in for the new season, but I cannot guarantee it. Um, but um, we, we will happily keep people informed uh, via the forum that Jack mentioned earlier uh, on the knowledge base um, for any future updates, especially around access to match day. Perfect. Thank you, Sam. Um, and at the moment, I can't see any further questions coming in that we haven't answered already i'll just give it one more minute while i have a look through um we've got a question here around emergency registrations mm -hmm. um and whether they, they can continue next year is that up to the league or yeah great question so emergency contact uh, emergency registrations or on the day registrations are more than catered for in whole game system um so depending on you as a league you can decide how this process works um, I know some leagues still have paper forms for the on the day process, um, but as long as as long as you can make sure that the opposition and the league are satisfied and that can be dictated by the league, um, you can in whole game system backgate a registration. So if they were added on the Sunday after a Saturday evening, uh, after a Saturday afternoon game, uh, you can backdate the registration so that when the team is submitting their players through, that player will then show as available and registered and eligible to play. Um, for that coming uh, for that game that they just played in. Perfect. And Sam, I can't see any more coming in now. Um, but if you've got any more questions um, whilst you're watching this and your question has been answered, send them in to grassroots technology at the FA.com um, and I'm sure we can help. Brilliant. That's perfect. Thank you, Jack. Um, so basically, all that's left from me to say is thank you for your time this evening. Um, please do remember we are doing what we can to modernise our technology to greater serve the game. Uh, what we don't want to do is put up more red tape and more uh, admin time on any volunteer so everything we are doing is has got the volunteer at the center of our thinking uh, to make it as simple and as easy as possible to complete your administration tasks uh, and as jack said any problems any issues any questions you can head to either our knowledge base which is grassroots technology dot the fa dot com or you can email the lovely team uh, at grassroots technology at the fa dot com um, with any of your queries and they'll be more than happy to get back to you. Um, so yeah, thank you for your um, your time this evening. Apologies for the, the link uh, initially being sent out incorrectly. Um, you are more than welcome to book onto any of the sessions in the future by the same booking link uh, that you, you, you used for this. Uh, and you again, you're more than welcome to share the recording link, which is the link that you used to get onto here tonight uh, with any other coaches or committee members within your club or league, um, should they want to tune into this um, at their own leisure. That will come with captions and I will just um, very much, very quickly um, caveat that with a very, <laughs> it's got very limited understanding of the Northwest accent, shall we say. Um, so it's not the greatest in picking up my voice, uh, but I know Jack and Kirsten's voices are much uh, healthier on the captions, should you wish to use that. Um, but otherwise, thank you for your time and I wish you a pleasant evening and rest of the week. Thank you. <laughs>